Good afternoon, friends. We are working on 15th August with my team to build up to these videos. Now, this series is going to after my earlier series of grant. We will be working on governor general orders, and these will be working for the three presidencies. So, what was this distinction? So, this 120th video of mine will speak of it. So, these three presidencies were distinct, they were separate. That during the period of governor general order, pa passed many orders, regulations, rules for the administration in these three distinct presidencies called the Bengal Madras Bombay, also called the regulation province. Now, where all is this written? It is written in the Kant manual. Simultaneously, various army regulations were passed for these three separate presidencies. For Bengal army, we started from 1855, 1873, 1880, 1887, Madras, 1869, 1876 and 1887. Bombay army regulations, the first came in our hand was of 1875 and 1887. Why the last army regulations of the three presidencies was 1887? As by 1879, the army organization had recommended the abolition of the three armies. During these years from 1792 to 1895, all these separate presidencies adhered to one rule of law and that was in any land, if any land was to be granted within any military cantonment since 1789 to 1801 in Madras presidency or since 1789-1803 in Agra province or since 1789 to 1817 in Bombay presidency or last since 1859, the making of Lieutenant Governorship of Punjab. So, all lands were given under a particular grant and in military cantonments. Now, we will talk of Bengal Presidency. We will now just discuss the laws and the GGOs made. What were they? And how did they actually culminate into various doings? So, the first one. We will talk Bengal presidencies in a chronological manner. I will read GGO 1. General order dated 27th April 1789. No private bungalows or buildings to be erected within the limits of the cantonment unless the permission of commander in chief. But if read, there could be private bungalows or buildings with the permission of the commander in chief. GGO 2, the stacked proceedings of the Governor General in Commander in Council dated 6th August 1801. His Excellency in Council, however, thinks it proper that uniformity should be preserved as much as possible in the principal lines of directions of the bungalows, in their distance from one another and also in the dimensions of the bungalows. And His Excellency in Council desires that this may be addressed with the reference also his formal orders that would like the Honorable Court to understand that the desire of uniformity, dimensions and direction was as per Regulation 20 of 1810 of the Public Works Department now called the PWD which clearly reads that the that all limits of cantonments and garrisons including military bazaars shall be marked in all cases under regulation 3 of 1809 under section 4 by the commander in chief and connect with the magistrate who is now the collector this regulation was extended under the code of regulation 
of PWD 1855 and on reading section 5 of it. So very simple. Now we come to GGO 3, Code Regulation for Public Works Department 1858. The commanding officer at each of those stations for which a report of the nature hereafter described has not been already furnished under section 4, regulation 3-1809 will accordingly submit to government through the commander-in-chief without delay a report framed in concert with the magistrate now collector of the district in which the containment or garrison may be situated upon the local limits of the containment or garrison forwarding at the same time any separate remark which the magistrate may wish to make on the subject for final orders of the government. So, the boundaries of the containment from 1809 to 1855 were defined when confirmed. Now, these boundaries had to be confirmed by the government. Then it should be marked by pillars which are to be supplied whenever they have been destroyed or are not forthcoming. Any existing village within the limits of a containment should also have its boundaries marked by pillars beyond which it should not be permitted to encroach upon. So, way back in 1809, there were boundary pillars which could take in military boundary pillars and which could take in village boundary pillars. And finally, the whole area was called the cantonment or the military station. Friends, we need to work out. GGO 4, the ground allowed for the compounds for others of all branches of the army is like follows field officers 80, 83 uh, into 50 yards captain 60 and a half into 50 yards sub lieutenant 50 into 50 yards so the area was also designed ggo 5 the size of property bungalow is varying within any given size mentioned above and to its very neighborhood if you check your bungalow and my bungalow sizes start from 1.6 to 9 to 10 acres and it could have reached up to 100 bigas or acres. Now we will talk of GGO 6. I am just numbering the GGO. The various towns were stationed within three different armies of Bengal present days. So we need to work on this. We need to dig into all this. GGO 7. I am not talking of these, these are not GGO 7, 6, 4 or 2, these are just numbers given by me. The Governor General Order, Wide Commander in Chief dated 31 July 1811, it said the same doing. Military Circular of 11, 6, 1833 read that all surplus lands within the camps, garrisons, cantonments, military cantonments would be without delay subjected back to the local civil authority if not required. Now there is another GGO General Order of Commander-in-Chief dated 16th September 1833. What does it say? Register of Houses. The Commander-in-Chief is pleased to direct that a register shall be kept in the office of the Principal Staff Officer at the station of Dumdum, Barakpur, Dinapur, Banaras, Kanpur, Agra, Meerut, Karnal, of the sale or transfer of any houses, bungalows or gardens within the limits of the cantonments. So, 1833 it was a cantonment and in order that these registers may be as complete as possible, the present proprietor of house etc will be sent to different staff officers a memorandum stating when they purchased or became proprietors of them, from whom they obtained them and the dimensions of their different compounds. Here this order speaks of sale of bungalow from one proprietor to another to it talks of dimensions of various different compounds and three it talks of sale of an house or a piece of land 
all these three points goes to prove what i have been saying till date so friends this is how these things were to be done now coming to that since there was no documentation under any of the registration act 1877 or the transfer of properties act 1882 then under which regulation rule or act other than the act under section 10 of 1865 was the maintenance of sale deeds being done and after the making of this act 1865 were they being kept in records under section 10 of it so somewhere you know the truth has to be brought in front of the honorable court that why are these sale deeds which are registered under such and such act of 1865 are not forthcoming that in all cases where houses were occupied by a person not being an officer or a soldier of the force at that station are taken possession of as above mentioned care shall be taken to consult the advantages and convenience of the occupant as far as exigencies in the cases in public interest may permit to and a special committee for arbitration to fix the value of his house or rent so that the appropriation of the house can be done so everything the commander in chief was designed that if it is a private property if it is not a private property but it has moved into the hands of a native how it has to be taken back but today we are living in an era where we don't even know anything so that's all i request please watch these youtubes okay so once again i thank you all we are old grants never converted into new grants of 1790 1812 or 1828 thank you good day